This is Singapore's largest floating solar farm. It's not the only solar farm we have, but it is the biggest. As of the second quarter of 2022, there are 5,733 solar installations in Singapore, generating a total installed capacity of 703 megawatt peak. This can generate enough energy to power up to 111,000 households for a year. Given that Singapore is so hot and sunny most of the time, have you ever wondered, why can't Singapore be powered by solar energy alone? Singapore has been expanding its solar capacity in the past few years. Its goal is to deploy up to at least 2 gigawatt peak of solar capacity by 2030, which could, over the course of a year, generate enough energy to power around 350,000 households for a year. But according to the Energy Market Authority's estimation, this will only account for 3% of Singapore's total electricity demand in 2030. Why are we aiming for so little? The biggest limitation we have is really one of land availability. So as a very small and very densely populated city-state, we don't have a lot of land. We don't have the sort of vast land areas that you see in countries like Australia to deploy huge solar farms. And while we think of Singapore as hot and sunny, it's often cloudy or rainy as well. So solar power is what we call intermittent, meaning that it's not always available when you need it. So obviously it's uh, not available at night, but even during the day when it's sunny like this, if you have a cloud cover or sudden storms, it can really cause the solar output to drop drastically. There are three main considerations Singapore has when developing energy policies. These considerations are what is called the energy trilemma. So the energy trilemma means that we have to balance three often conflicting objectives. And the three objectives are sustainability, energy security, and affordability. Solar energy is definitely a greener source of energy, and the costs are comparable or even lower than using gas to generate electricity now. But what solar is not so great at is on the energy security angle. Obviously, being a domestic renewable source, it does help us a little bit in terms of being more energy independent, but it's not generating at the kind of scale that we need to fully displace conventional generation. To ensure a reliable supply of power 24-7, Singapore still uses natural gas for most of its electricity generation, around 95% to be exact. So 20 years ago, when we were considering a move away from the more pollutive fuel oil for power generation, we settled on natural gas because at that point in time, renewables were either too nascent or too expensive. And natural gas for a long time has helped us to meet all three legs of the energy trilemma. But because natural gas has to be imported, developments in other parts of the world, such as rising global energy demand post-pandemic, and even the war in Ukraine, can push up energy prices here. So natural gas is an internationally traded commodity, and we import all the natural gas that we need for power generation. So we are dependent on uh, global price movements. If the price increases globally, then it will translate to higher prices here in Singapore too. At the same time, Singapore is looking to achieve net zero by 2050. The main concern, I guess, is that natural gas is a fossil fuel. So it does emit greenhouse gas emissions when burned. And as we aim to get to net zero by 2050, we're going to have to find a way either to abate those emissions or to find a cleaner burning fuel to replace natural gas. With the power sector accounting around 40% of Singapore's emissions, Singapore is also considering other green energy sources besides solar. A report by the Energy 2050 Committee stated that Singapore is considering low-carbon electricity imports, hydrogen, and geothermal energy as alternative energy sources. Singapore is looking to import a capacity of up to 4 gigawatts of low-carbon electricity by 2035, which could make up around 30% of Singapore's projected energy supply then. More recently, the government has outlined Singapore's national hydrogen strategy, where low-carbon hydrogen could potentially supply up to half of Singapore's power needs by 2050. So in evaluating any future energy source, we're always looking to see how we can better balance the trilemma. Singapore is what we call renewable energy disadvantage, meaning that we just do not have a lot of renewable energy resources. Uh, we have a lot of sunlight, so solar is our most promising source, but because we have very little land to deploy solar, ultimately it can only account for perhaps 10% of our uh, electricity demand. Yeah, so all options are on the table. In the race to get to net zero, I think we can't afford to rule out anything at this moment in time. I liken this whole energy transition to performing open heart surgery on a patient while the patient is still running a marathon. It's a very complex task that will take many years in the making. In the meantime, there are things the government does to help Singaporeans mitigate the cost. These include use safe rebates to offset higher electricity prices and provide some relief to households. The cheapest form of energy is the energy that we don't use. 
So even as we try as fast and as much to accelerate the energy transition, we have to keep a watch on energy demand because we can't let demand grow in an uncontrolled fashion. So what can we do in the meantime? Just start saving electricity. Every little bit counts. Buy more energy efficient appliances, use the fan more, use the aircon less, turn off the water heater when you're not using it. Every little bit counts.